Diego, uh, back in Mexico, man. I, I know that uh, you know it didn't work out for you the first time here, but I got to think the energy that's that's here and all those things. I mean, uh, I got to think that uh, you're excited about fighting here again. Extremely excited, just uh, confident, prepared, put all the hard work in at uh, Jackson Wink MMA with my coaches and my team, and and um, you know I did my part and uh, got the weight down lower than ever before. And so you know I can't. Yesterday, uh, let's see, Tuesday I checked in at 162. So it's, it's a real easy wake up for me, and um, I'm, my cardio's great, shape's great, ready to fight. What changes did you make? Because it's interesting, I mean, I think a guy like you, a veteran that's been around as long as you've been around and done everything they do, you're still tweaking it, you're still dialing still, it, you're still figuring it out. Still, still tweaking it, man. Um, I, had, uh, I had a guy uh, named Shan Stratton, he came in and helped me out, just totally changed it up, took the alkalinity, alkaline water and the diet to a whole nother level. You know, I was already drinking, the last camp was the first camp on the alkaline water, but this camp, I, I, I compromised my diet to where, you know, everything's based on alkaline, enzymes, probiotics, you know, I think it's something very similar to what Randy Couture was doing back in the day, but it's, it's, it's not easy. You have to be strict with it, you know, and it, you, it's a lot of greens powder, a, a lot of alkaline water, a lot of fish, you know, you're not eating meat, and, and um, I, I brought it down. Interesting. Scientific stuff, man. It's crazy. Very, very just, scientific. You know, very hand -hand scientific. combat in the cage, and then and here it is. It's scientific stuff. And then on the other aspect, man, I'm doing cryotherapy every single day, just like LeBron James, man. Every single day I'm in there. Well, out here anyway. While I've been out here fight week, every single day doing cryotherapy. Got the uh, Norma Tech recovery boots. Like I mean, like I'm on the recovery. I know that come Saturday night, I'm gonna be 100%. And like, I just went to the to the steam room just to get a little steam, just to just to feel good, because I couldn't I couldn't warm up from the cryotherapy this morning. I was like I was like I'm go I'm not going down there to cut weight. I'm going down there to get a little steam. It's like it's a spa. Nice. And so and I see these guys running on the treadmill and they're just running their legs dead. They're running their legs dead, and I'm like. Oh, these poor kids, man. They don't know what they're doing to themselves. Their legs are gonna be dead. The little kicks are gonna be like little little butterfly kicks because you ain't gonna have no energy. Come come fight time. You're gonna be fighting sore at 70%, maybe maybe 65, you know, maybe, you know, who knows how much you're gonna be able to recover. And then you add the dehydration on top of hard workouts, you're killing yourself. Let's talk about UFC two hundred, man. I mean you were in a good you were in a good place, man. You you had good energy, you, know, you were oh, focused, I think. You know, Talk about that one. I mean, when you go back, I mean, people get caught sometimes. This was not hey. you getting dominated. This hey. was you getting caught. But, but what lessons do you take out of that hey. one? Hardest loss of the career to take, to yeah. be honest with you, man. Even I've been in some, some wars where, you know, my face is just split apart. And, you know, it, it, I've, been through some, I've been through some shit. And, and that fight was the hardest fight to take because going into that fight, my mind was right. My, my confidence was up. The tr everything felt, everything felt like better than it's ever been. So I know that I was at my best going into UFC 200, the whole UFC 200 event, you know, just, just everything. Like I was ready to go and I got in there and you know, Joe, Joe caught me with a good mixed martial arts technique. He framed, it wasn't a boxing technique. He framed my arm and as his arm came down, he caught me with a punch I didn't see. My mouthpiece came out. It was, a, I think, a minute and 18 into the fight. And he followed up hard on me, man. And, and I, was still, I was still there. I was trying to tell the, the, the ref, I'm like, I'm, I'm still here, you know, like, I'm, I'm okay. But, but in all reality, I wasn't okay. And Joe, Joe put it on me right there with what, everything that he had to finish me. The ref did a good job of stopping the fight. And, you know, it was really hard to take. But in the end, I had to say, you know what? You do this long enough, you're, you're gonna run into every situation, scenario, and, and, and you're, gonna, you're gonna, eventually, it was, it was it, that night was my time to get caught, and, and I, I got caught with the shot I didn't see, and my opponent followed up great. I was happy that I didn't get knocked out unconscious, you know, um, I, still, I still have a durable chin, and, and I, I feel that, you know, yeah, I took a hard loss. You know, I I, cr I broke the lateral uh, lateral medial fracture in my nose, and so I, it, I had to recover. And um, you know, it's one of those things you got to just let the past be the past. Move forward, go forward. Know that I've been doing this for a long time, and that things like that are going to happen. Mm -hmm. Then they come to you with a name like Marcin Held. 
What's your initial take? I mean, is this a guy that you knew anything about? I mean, um, I didn't, but you know, it was a good thing because um, you know he had he had came by Jackson's. I wasn't training because I was I was injured before 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 I took the fight. He had came by Jackson's, stayed for two weeks, and trained. So you know, me and my coaches, we all we all know his game. Everybody knows his game. He's an ankle lock guy. I'm sure he's continuing to evolve and and get better in different areas and um, change his style up his game, but. Um, you know, he's a jiu-jitsu grappler guy, and um, I've been uh, fighting for a long time, and I've been fighting the highest level strikers and mixed martial arts fighters in the UFC for a long time, and so now I get to fight a grappler. So, you know, it, it, it's an exciting matchup. I have to remember from experience, you know, who I am. I'm Diego Sanchez. I'm the nightmare. You go forward. You fight. You're aggressive. And I'm the predator, and he's the prey. You know, and, and what I learned in the Joe Lozon fight was this, all right, so everybody knows, okay, Diego Sanchez, bite down on his mouthpiece, Arr, he's coming, Arr, you know, and so I had to, re I, I, I was like, okay, no, that's predictable, you know, that's something that people can anticipate, you know, a really, uh, really high level striker sees me coming in ready to, ready to get hit that he knows I'm coming in. And so, you know, I had to, you know, and a lot of boxing coaches over the years have told me, get loose, Diego, get loose, be loose, relax, relax. And then I'll be on the mitts and, I'll, and when I start to relax, it's like boom, 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 boom. It's fast and it's crisp. And so my mindset going into this fight was, I'm calm and I'm confident. I am calm and I'm confident. And that's a mantra that I would say over and over. I'm calm and I'm confident. I'm calm and I'm confident. And I went into this fight and Joe Lozon, I still believe his strength is his grappling. And so I, 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 I relied on my chin a little bit, but I did, uh, I did, um, I did underestimate his, his punching power in the first two minutes. And, um, and the boy, and, 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 and Joe can hit, you know, the man can hit. He has some power in his hands. And, and um, you know, I, I, I learned a very valuable lesson. It doesn't matter who you're fighting, whether it's Joe Lozon, whether it's Marching Health, my mouthpiece is in and I'm strapped and I'm ready to go from the gate. And because, you know, the fight before, I kind of went in there with uh, Jim and um, I, I kind of warmed up nice in the cage. I, I warmed up nice in the cage and I found my rhythm in there. And, and that's always been something that's good for me, warming up in the cage. Like I, I get it going in the cage. And I, I learned a very hard lesson to learn, but I learned it and um, I'm moving forward and I'm healthy and I'm happy and I'm ready to, ready to go on, on Saturday night and I couldn't be more excited to fight here in Mexico City. It's awesome, I man. We're sitting here talking about your growth, your evolution, what you're still learning. I mean, what are your goals? Right? Like, what's your motivation? I mean, you've been doing this a long time. What's, what's left for Diego Sanchez to accomplish? I mean, you're, you're an obvious future Hall of Famer. <laughs> you know, you know the, the, the goal never ends, man. The goal, is, the goal is the belt. The goal is the championship. The main goal is, you know, to be the this legendary fighter who people remember for all of time for these great fights not only not only the wars but you know i want to go out there and put on some do dominant performances you know i want to go out there i want to get some finishes i want to i want to i want to win the world championship just like michael bisping did you know that's that's the thing i don't give up on my dream you know whether whether a, a million fans on Twitter, I don't care who it is. I'm not gonna give up on my dream because I know myself that I compete at the world's best gym and I dominate rounds with some of the best strikers, the best fighters, the best wrestlers the, from Russia. I have all these Russian wrestlers come in all the time. I mean, I mean, I have all these, uh, they're, they're just, they're, they're the Russian Sambo badasses, man. And these guys are, they're legit, man. So, so Marching Hell thinks I ain't never seen an ankle lock. I'm going with the three-time world combat champ champion, Ar Armand, and, and this guy's ankle locks, he got ankle locks, this guy that Marching ain't never seen before. So I know, I know where I'm at, and um, I'm 34 years old. And you know, you got guys who have been able to fight older into their older age. I feel that I'm one of those guys who will fight into my older age. I always said at 37, I'm gonna look at where I'm at, refocus, reanalyze, and see what's gonna, if I'm gonna retire or, or, or what. But as long as I'm competing at the top level, making a, a, a good living, a good honest living. You know, I'm making a good honest living, taking care of my family, paying my bills, paying my taxes, well, you know, 
and I get to do what I love. I get to compete and do martial arts and continue to learn and to continue to learn. But I'll, I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this. I do have a passion for the whole anti-aging, the anti-aging, the, the, the diets, the alkaline waters, the supplements, the vitamins, you know, everything. I, I love that stuff. So, you know, I think that that's going to be an edge for me going into the future. You know, I was doing yoga since I was, since I was 20. You know, and so I think those are edges that I'm going to have that are going to give me longevity as I get older. How do you want to be remembered when you do decide to hang it up? I mean, you, you talked about, you know, the, the great fights that you've had and the brawls you had. I think that's what a lot of people remember you as. But I know you focused a lot lately, too, on, on your character and, and, you know, who you are as a, as a family man and as a, as a Christian and all those things. I mean, how exactly do you, do you want people to remember you when you do decide to hang it up? I just want to be remembered as great. I just want to be remembered as, you know, someone who is fun, you know, fun, exciting and great. Just, you know, someone who when you met him in the street, they were humble and he shake your hand and he said, oh, come over here, you know, come here, you know, you know, what's up, bro? You know, people to people, people, you know, human beings, you know, and that's what I want to be remembered as. You know, I want my I, I just want my kids to be like, you know, look, that was dad, you know, like. And dad, dad, dad was a dad was a dad was a badass. You know, dad, dad still is a badass. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Saturday night, man. How does how does this thing go down? You you know what the you know what the crowd likes to see here. You know what the spirit um, they have. What, you what know, does this thing you know, Saturday night. Um, I have to come forward and I have to put pressure, and that's how Diego Sanchez fights. You know, um, I, when I was going forward with Joe Lozon, I was uh, 15 of my first 17 strikes. I was lining everything crisp and precise. I have to come forward. I have to stock this man down, and I, you know, I'm ready. If, if I'm ready for his takedowns, I'm ready for whatever he's really willing to jump and roll to my ankle locks. My legs will be shaved and silky smooth, and. <laughs> You know, I, I I put an Instagram of me with a with a, a, a pedicure tool, getting my getting my heels all nice and silky smooth, and you know I, I'm ready for whatever he brings. But the thing is, this is he ready for what I'm gonna bring? Because what I'm gonna bring is gonna be fire. It's gonna be that Latin heat, and I'm going for the KO. I'm going for the KO. I'm I'm going for his head because in my mindset going into this fight. It is calm, it is confident, and it is courageous. I added courageous to it. I added calm, confident, and courageous at the same time because that's what I am. I'm courageous in the cage, you know, and I didn't get to show that my last time, but this time I'm going to come in there calm, confident, and courageous, and I'm going to be the nightmare. I'm not afraid to take this guy down. You know, I will, I will take this guy down when I want to, you know, when the time is right. I'll take him down, and I will be nightmare. And so he wants to to take these. And my mindset is I have kids, I have a family, I have a career. All right? And he wants to break my leg. I look at it like this. He wants to break my leg. So I have to break his face before he breaks my leg. And so that's how I look at it going into this fight. So I'm going in there to, I'm going to break his face. I'm going to break his body. I'm going to break his leg. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to break his spirit. And that's what Diego Sanchez, the nightmare, plans to do on Saturday night.